Salutations and good morrow everyone and welcome back to another grounded build video where today we're going to be hopping in and we are talking a new build that I've been testing out lately. I like this one almost as much as I like my poison build. It's a super cool build and it allows you to do a little bit of bleed damage as well as lowering defense, doing good amounts of damage. All around, I really, really like this class, and it uses one of the weapons in the game that has the highest DPS value, the Rust Spear. Speaking of that, guys, let's hop in and let's talk about it. Now, first things first, I'm going to point out that my gear is not all the way upgraded, okay? So it's even missing some of its greatness, and I've been testing it like this as a little bit of a bonus. So... First things first, Rusty Spear. The Rusty Spear is the best spear in the game. It has the most damage and it can be upgraded down any path you want it to be. I went down Salty. You can go down Mighty or Sour or however you want to bring it down. Uh, if you want a little bit more stun, go down, go down Sour, you know, however you want to do it. But I went down Salty with mine because it helps with other things in the yard that are weak to salt and stabbing at the same time. The other thing that's nice about spears is one of the statuses that we're grabbing is javelin ear. And when you mix javelin ear and a spear, it actually lowers uh, enemy armor whenever you're attacking. So you use that. Plus, if you block, you're going to be lowering enemy armor and defense. It's it's all it's all a good thing. It's all a good thing. But speaking of, yes, I'm using the fire ant shield. The fire ant shield gives you block strength and block corrosion. Block corrosion blocking attacks have a chance to to briefly lower attacker's defense. This is a good thing because this is going to allow you to do more damage because the spear is not maxed out in damage in any way, but nonetheless, it's going to help you out. Also, the rusty spear does come with infection. Infection lowers the, the enemy's attack damage. So all in all, it works really well with this build, assuming how none of it's actually tier three armor except for the chest piece, but we'll get into that in just a second. Thor's pendant, I like using this one because it helps out, but you could use a mantis trinket as well if you want to use a different trinket other than Thor's Pendant, but this just gives you a bunch of extra bonuses, so I like throwing it on my builds, but if you get yourself a Mantis Trinket, go ahead and try that one out. It makes it so you crit more often. Okay, Black Ant Helmet and Legs. Let's talk about why. They give you crit after block. What crit after block is, is block attacks using the chance to increase your critical hit chance for a short amount of time. So, as you're blocking damage, say if you perfect block or even do regular damage, now not only are you in lowering their defense by using this shield, but you're also going to be giving yourself the ability to do criticals, which makes you even more powerful. Okay? Same thing goes for the legs, exactly the same. Also, if you go ahead and get these upgraded, you get crit hyper stamina, which allows you to get even more stamina back um, once you crit, I believe. And then finally, the Assassin's Chest Plate. It gives you Cutman and Light Armor. What Cutman is, is your critical hits cause enemies to bleed. This is a good perk, and I believe it also gives you the chance to get more crit damage once it's upgraded past level 5, if you go out on the sleek path, which I would definitely suggest you guys do. But all in all, it's meant for crits. So let's talk a little bit more about why I chose this build the way that I did. Okay, so first things first. Spears are going to make it so you're lowering enemies' armor or defenses. Then the shield is also going to lower the enemy's defense. Both of those together, now you're lowering the defense every time you're attacking and blocking. So you're really going to drive down that defense, allowing you to do more damage. Second thing, the armor pieces together are going to make it so whenever you're blocking, lowering the enemy's defense, you're also going to be getting the ability to do more crits whenever you're hitting. And the more crits you can do, the more damage that you can do. So, very, very powerful. Then, also, on top of that, the bleed damage from doing crits as well. The bleed damage is not insane on the Mantis chestplate, but it still is damage over time. Plus the corrosion of lowering the enemy's attack, damage over time, plus lowering defense, plus lowering the enemy's attack, plus being able to do a decent amount of damage, because this thing actually swings pretty quick. It makes this build really, really, really strong, and I would suggest you guys go and test this one out. I think it's really fun to use. Now you can boost this up by one, using a mantis trinket like I said, or two, by going through and making yourself some meals that can really help out this as well. There's a couple different things you could do, like going ahead and giving yourself like a black ox burger to give you more damage resist and more health. This would be a good one for you guys to go down if you guys are worried about dying a lot. Like if you're going to go in and fight like a praying mantis or some black widows, this would probably be a great thing for you guys to eat before you guys jump in and start going into battle. Smoothies are around that same thing. But if I was going to suggest a smoothie for you guys to use, I would definitely suggest um, the attacking smoothie, the one that allows you to do more damage, um, because the more damage you can do, the quicker you're going to fell enemies and things like that. That smoothie, it doesn't last very long. Make sure you take it down the sticky path. But nonetheless, 
it's a good smoothie for you to use if you're looking for smoothie and food recommendations. Those are the two for this build. Now, the final thing we need to talk about here, guys, is actually perks. Um, what I want to do first, though, is I want to go show you guys, even with this not even upgraded all the way, for us not getting crit hyper stamina and also not getting crit blows with more damage, I want to show you guys, like, this is just a fire ant, right? So, I mean, that's just a red ant, so that was kind of cheese, right? Let's run over here really quick while we drink some water. Nice and clean. Go ahead and put my spear back on. Put my spear back on. There we go. All right, let's go see what we can do to a spider over here, right? So we got just a general orb weaver. Now, these are tier one enemies, but nonetheless, I want to show you guys. So I can block, and then you see in the bottom left that it's now making it so I can uh, crit more often. So I'm going to go ahead and just do more. Oh, there was a crit right there. Oh, there was a crit right there. Yeah. It's nasty how this works. And... The best part is, is say you're fighting a praying mantis or the mant or the black widow or something like that. The black widow is not immune to bleed, nor is the praying mantis. So you can actually cause damage over time to both of them by going ahead and doing this. It becomes a super, super powerful thing for you to do. There was a crit right there. And there goes that bleed damage starting to take away that health. But really, as you're going through, I mean, the crits are going to flow in like crazy when you're using this. So, all in all, it's a really good build. Now, let's talk perks here, because I know that's another one you guys always ask me about. Sim, what perks are you using and why? So, let's go through and talk them, shall we? So, first things first, Javelin Ear. I'm using Javelin Ear because, like I said, it literally lowers your enemy's armor. The higher it is, the lower the armor rate every time you're, you're hitting them with a spear. The more, lower you, the more you lower their armor, the more you're lowering their defense. The more you're lowering their defense, the more damage you're going to do per hit. Meat Shield, guys, you guys know from watching my builds, I always keep Meat Shield out of my builds because I never want any of you guys to die when you're using these builds. You could swap Meat Shield out if you're looking for more of a glass cannon, but this is more of a tank build, well, a tank addition to the build because it makes it so you can take more damage, right? Then we obviously have Coup de Grass on there. It's going to up your critical hit chance. Always a good one to have. And Trapper Peeper, this is the four ones that I've gone down for this build. Now, you could go down a couple of other things as well that could help you with this build. So being how it's built around blocking and then critting, you could go through and give yourself like Corporate Kickback or Shocking Dismissal. Both of these are built off of blocking. Shot Corporate Kickback going through, fighting the boss that's in the Moldor Castle. You get that one. You could go through and use this to give yourself a little bit of life steal, so you can heal while you're fighting. The spear hits quickly. It's a good skill. Or you could use Corporate uh, Shocking Dismissal. Shocking Dismissal you get from fighting the uh, Assistant Manager. Once you beat him, what this does is it allows you to build up a powerful burst of electricity damage, causing stuns. All these things are good ideas, but really it's kind of up to you guys. Um, exploring wise, it's always good to have cardio fan, but not while you're fighting. I wouldn't suggest having that. Also, barbarian, probably not the best idea. You could throw parry master on, but what I want to remind you guys is this, this build is built around blocking damage. So if you block damage, parry master, yes, it's going to make it so you perfect block, but like I said, more glass cannon, but parry master could be your fifth skill that you use. So I'll leave it up to you guys. But all in all, it's really, really powerful. I'll go through and show you guys all the skills right now of what the uh, of what the final upgraded version of this could look like. And let's check that out. All right, so here I am inside of my creative with bugs game, and I have myself completely upgraded out to the teeth, right? I have a level nine spear. I have a level nine, or I have the level two helmet. I have or a level nine helmet, sorry. Level nine chest plate, never level nine legs. What it's giving you all in all is block strength, which is giving you so you block more damage. Block corrosion, like I said before. Crit after block, this is what we've already seen. Medium armor, we've already seen that. Crit hyper stamina, increases your stamina regen for a short amount of time after you critical. This is great. Cut man, like I said, always good to have. Yo, crit stun, crit stun, uh, critical hits apply stun damage. That's what the uh, perk for the assassin chest plate is. My bad, my bad. I got confused. Um, but that is what that is. And then it's yoke blows that you get when you have the full Mantis armor set. That's what it is. My bad. Little confuzzled. But invincible attack and invincible shielding. Uh, this is coming from the Sarah's charm. The Sarah's charm, I was using this while I was going through to practice with things. So that way my weapon wouldn't break. But all in all, it's really, really cool. I like this charm. But the Thor's pendant or the Mantis charm are definitely going to do you guys better than this build will.
Now, it does give you a decent amount of attack damage. I went sour on this one because I was testing it with a little bit of everything. I went sour on this. It still hits really fast, and all in all, you can pretty much wreck anything. Um, I am in a creative with bugs game, so nothing's really going to attack me, but we'll attack this roly-poly over here and see what kind of damage that we can do. So, when you're going through and you're actually starting to, to do damage against it, you're not going to do as much now, I want to point out the fact that this is not with the blocking corrosion or anything like that, and I only have two perks on, so it doesn't have the uh, all the perks that you could have, but nonetheless, you are doing a ton of damage, and for going through and fighting one of the toughest bugs in the game when it comes to armor-wise, that's not some bad damage right there. That's actually a lot of damage that you're doing right there. So all in all, this build is really fun, guys. I would suggest you guys go out and give it a try. If you have extra materials, you're just kind of looking for something fun to give a try while we're waiting for the next update to Grounded, which has been confirmed. By the way, we are getting another update to Grounded. But if you guys are just looking for something new, try out this build. It's a lot of fun. But thank you, everybody, so much for watching this episode. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next one.